Hi, I'm Ann Messerschmidt, the Environmental Resources Specialist with the City of Lakeville. And we're out here today on Lake Marion with our very special lake consultant, the lake detective, Steve McComas. And we're here today to kind of show you what's going on out here in the winter. Um, you know, how the fish are doing in the water. We're gonna test the dissolved oxygen levels. So Steve, do you wanna tell us a little bit about, tell our viewers how, you know, how we monitor kind of what equipment we use and then um, what the levels mean? Sure, Ann. Well, lakes are always a little bit mysterious and that's why we check them almost all year long. During the summer, we're checking for nutrients and things, but during the winter, we have to check things out for dissolved oxygen primarily because the fish are going to need a minimum of five parts per million of dissolved oxygen. Now the lake starts probably at about 10 or 12 parts per million and then after that the clock starts ticking and this, the, the dissolved oxygen levels will be going down as the winter goes on. That's why we're out here testing. Actually the city's been doing a great job of monitoring not only Lake Marion but a variety of lakes around the whole city. They just keep tabs on what the dissolved oxygen is doing because that dictates what's going to happen to the fish. Yep, yep, we go out uh, a couple times a month generally and as the winter drags on we go out a little bit more frequently. We drill a hole and drop our probe down and it'll tell us the different levels of oxygen within the stratified water. And then do you want to describe, you know, what we're kind of finding? Well, fish need a minimum of about five parts per million of oxygen. When they have five parts per million or higher, they're as happy as a clam at high tide. But when that DO starts dropping, DO is dissolved oxygen. When the dissolved oxygen starts going down, say around two parts per million, fish start getting a little bit nervous. I mean, they're more nervous than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. At one part per million, some fish can start dying, primarily walleyes first. And then after that it drops down, then different fish have different sensitivities with the bullheads being about the toughest fish out in the lake. So they can live, it seems like almost without oxygen, but uh, they, they, they do have their limits as well. But uh, that when all the oxygen is consumed in the lake, then that's called winter kill, and that's when the fish die. And, but that's why the city is out checking these various lakes, just to keep tabs on what the status is. Right, and on some lakes that are really small where they're quite shallow and really aren't fit to support fish populations even though they are there, you know, it's actually good sometimes to have a winter kill, is that not right? A winter kill will kind of rebalance the, the population or the, the setting in a lake, you're exactly right, Ann. But still, that's where there's another mystery coming up. Some of these ponds and shallow lakes will support fish in winters and we think there should be, <laughs> they shouldn't support them. Right. We're, we're, that's why we're kind of investigating right now. We're, on, we're tracking that mystery as we speak. From what we've been finding over the years, all Lakeville lakes are relatively healthy, depending on the lake. Lake Marion has been doing well for a number of years. It's a high recreation lake, and um, we actually have an aerator that we might use if the dissolved oxygen levels drop far enough. But, you know, there's only so much we can do as far as monitoring and um, trying to educate residents is really a big part. And what's your best advice for residents on how they can keep the lakes healthy? Right, everybody can contribute. In fact, everybody does contribute. And one of the things that lake residents can do or even city residents is just take a look at one, housekeeping practices on their lawn. Uh, by maintaining a good lawn by, and also minimizing the use of fertilizer, then any runoff from the lawn that will end up toward the lake or into the lake will be minimal and that will help the lake because the water quality in the lake during the summer, especially the type of algae and the amount of algae that's generated during the summer, right now that algae has died down and it's in the bottom of the lake and decomposing. The more algae you have in the summertime, the more decomposition there is in the winter and that's how we're losing dissolved oxygen. Mm -hmm. So good water clarity in the summer bodes well for good winter conditions and oxygen conditions in the winter time. So residents should make sure they sweep all their grass clippings and leaves off the street back onto their lawn and all the fertilizer as well. That That's keeps right. all the phosphorus up. Right. Overall, good housekeeping. Leaves, lawns, fertilizers. So something that they, that's something that they have control over too. Exactly. Well, thanks, Steve, for coming out. We certainly appreciate all the work you do for us, and you always there to answer our questions. Well, this is a fun city. City of Lakeville has done a lot of work in the past to get us to a level where the lakes are in pretty good shape. Makes my job pretty easy. There aren't that many mysteries to solve out here in the Lakeville lakes, at least this year.
If you have any questions, you can give me a call at 952-985-4528.